everyone. This is uh, DB0 once more. Uh, this is uh, another match in the single elimination rounds of the Board Game Geek 2 tournament. Today with me I have uh, Tragic, uh, otherwise known as... G'day, mate. How are you going? Good. Uh, Tragic is a much more uh, advanced uh, game caster than I am, so I'm hoping he will spice up my uh, uh, recordings. And uh, he's also staying up very late for this event, so thank you very much. Yes, well, you guys are all on the other side of the planet. <laughs> uh, it's not our fault, but, you know, hopefully uh, my plugin makes you feel closer to all of us. Well, this is interesting already. We've got a wizard on the table. Wow. Hi. Fritzler is the only wizard player in the, in the uh, tournament, as far as I know, and he's also one of the very good players. He's uh, one of the original Netrunner players, and as far as I know, he was European champion as well. Right, right. So... He's bound to make some good plays and make that wizard sign. Well, he's probably um, going to be very aggressive then, isn't he? Like, he's using wizard, he's going to be trashing cards, he's going to have lots of ice trying to run through yeah, and trash. Yeah, absolutely. Unfortunately, uh, Waylands don't tend to run a lot of uh, trash assets. Um, fortunately, this Wayland seems to be playing some kind of uh, fast uh, tracing uh, variant, see there for a Chilo. So it's definitely going to play to the strengths of Wizard to be tracing those Chilos whenever they hit. Um, I'm actually quite surprised of this uh, Wayland. I haven't seen a Chilo, uh, a Chilo play yet, and it's really good, especially with those two Caduceus. It's brilliant. Um, is there much? Uh, do you know much about this other player, this uh, challenger, Sequencia? Unfortunately, not. Uh, I haven't seen him uh, before. He's from the European uh, time zone. From sorry, he's from the North American time zone, and I am completely unaware of him. I haven't played with him. I haven't seen him. But uh, he's obviously in the top, uh, the top player, so he must be at least decent. Uh, from what I checked in the uh, Swiss rounds, he was about 10th from the top, so he's uh, about midi medium compared to the rest of the top 16. So let's see what's going on here. Fritz is, is already face-checking. Yes, yeah, sorry? Then I go on. Uh, Fritz is already face-checking the Caduceus. Caduceus, unfortunately, is really good against that because it uh, makes his money back unless the runner opts to uh, waste uh, three. And... Um, so that is very much to the benefit of the uh, runner, of the corporation, when the uh, runner face check can do issues. Um, but it's also a real giveaway, this card. I mean, he's, he's basically saying there's something in my HQ because what, you know, like you wouldn't play this card just uh, blind, I don't think. Uh, the Caduceus, you mean? Yeah. Oh, yeah, you absolutely would. You play, uh, you always start with... Uh, this uh, ice, uh, this kind of cheap ice on your HQRD, uh, because first of all you don't want the runner to have information. Second of all, it's almost certain that you'll have at least one agenda in your hand, and so almost all runners expect that you have uh, at least one agenda in your hand. So there's not really a surprise that you're actually protecting your HQ. And um, mm, I, I, I still think it's more of an R&D card for first play because if you no no it's you really want to protect your uh, HQ and R&D at the start, especially against somebody like a wizard who is bound to play an imp if he sees an opening. Absolutely, and, yeah. And uh, see the imp on the wizard's hand; it's just uh, waiting. So if that uh, that uh, Caduceus wasn't there, it would be first play would be like a imp and then run on HQ. There we go. The uh, corporation is just stopping the runner from getting in without actually wasting any money, and that's so, good. Basically, continue, yeah, sir. No, no, go on. Um, that's the classic thing that's uh, going on in this case in that um, the runner is trying to uh, basically make the corporation waste money at the start of the game by uh, raising some early game ice. And um, if he had like two wall of uh, uh, static, for example, he would have to uh, pay all his money just to be uh, able to keep him out. But now with the Caduceus, he can keep him out and have money for the rest of the turn. Well, the corporation so, uh, does, does really have, does have money troubles towards the later of the game. So... You, I think I think a lot of the problems people have is overextending with their their uh, eye, putting out ice and resing ice too early and then not having anything to protect later on. Yeah, absolutely. Um, that's why Caduceus is so good because it protects and doesn't cost anything if they don't run it with a Sentry Breaker or Link. It's one of, absolutely one of my absolute favorite uh, uh, Sentries to see at my starting hand. I know that if I play this ice, it's not going to cost me anything, and it's going to stop the run. Um, of course, if uh, you're unlucky, you may get a runner that runs uh, Mimic, 
which makes your Caduceus not so useful. Okay, so a turn three with Secutia uh, actually having a turn. The runner is not uh, not targeting the the servers, so it's a little bit hard to see what's going on. I think you're going to have to start calling out when they're doing the runs. Well, you see it in the in the log. Uh, the runner does uh, when he starts a run. The game does announce he's starting a run on R and D or HQ. So take a keep an eye on the log. You can see it there. I mean, I mean, for the the viewers who are like watching it in like small windows on their phones and stuff like that, can't read True. the log. True. True. Uh, we may have to be, as you said, you may we may have to call it out for the benefit of our viewers. Hmm. Looks like there's a heavy decision going on here. Is it going to open a new server? Do you think? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I think that's a bluff. Probably he wants to make the runner. Oh no, he's not. Mm, he's upgrade. probably going to protect. Ah, he's opening just one server. And he's leaving his uh, HQ open. Given that I've seen uh, Fritter's deck before, that's probably not a wise choice. But we'll have to see how that goes. Um, it's very likely that Synquetica doesn't know how strong a runner can be, or maybe doesn't realize how strong a runner can be if you leave your HQ unprotected. There's still no, uh, nothing on his deck though from Frizza, you know, you don't see a lot of that kind of restraint very often, do you? People seem to just whack things down, but you really want to delay building your deck as long as possible so they know, they don't know what ice to put down. Exactly. And uh, also, the more you can face check the ice, the less risk you have because uh, you're not risking an archer, you're not risking a roto turret. there's nothing to risk if you don't have anything in the game. Yeah, it looks like uh, Frizz is just going to stand here, just going to pull credits this whole turn. Yeah, he's basically wanted to fill up so he can play the uh, Sur Gamble mm -hmm. and then be ready next turn to do something more drastic. There's no room to rush anyway, there's nothing on the table that can be an agenda, so he's not in a hurry to play. This lull, lulls in the corporation is exactly the moment when you want, as a, as a runner, you want to be taking it slow. Alright, so the corporation did play uh, an agenda, believing that the runner probably doesn't have the ice needed, ice breaker needed, and uh, he's probably going to regret it because Fritzl is actually holding a crit in his hand, which will make it very easy to get into that server without even using that uh, Steam hack. Well, he's got the money, he just uh, dropped a short gamble down. Can we peek at the cards without interrupting their game? Yeah, yeah, yeah you can. Just the right click and pick. Be very, very careful I don't hit. Uh, yeah. Okay. Good stuff. Yeah. yeah. There's nothing wrong you can hit the really, but yeah. Um, so yeah, don't... Okay. He actually drew a card. He may maybe let uh, the corporation have that agenda. I'm not sure. Well, Crypsis is yeah, a he's very expensive the card. Have it. it is. It is, but uh, it's so worth it. It's If you get it at the start of the, of the game, you can really uh, break into every server without actually needing a full suit. Whereas every other every other server, every other um, uh, icebreaker is a gamble. You know, do I have the correct icebreaker for the job? Well, I think uh, I think the correct move would have been to to run, but uh, that's a I think that's really surprising that he put out uh, ca a carapace. I mean, is net damage really a big not risk? Not against Wayland. Yeah. Well, I mean, no, I mean, it's not the net damage. It's meat damage. Meat damage. Yeah. If he's using uh, yes. using scorched earth. Scorched but, earth. It is. Well, Believe me, uh, one mistake scored. from the runner can easily... Yep, we see the three-pointer scored. Uh, unfortunately, there was no expensive vice to raise, so that Enigma was fine, I guess. Uh, the good thing is that uh, the corporation went down to um, three clicks, three credits, so uh, an account siphon at the moment won't really help Fritzer. But instead, he's going to get through and trust everything with an imp, and probably still the three-pointer that he has in his hand. So that was a big risk from the corporation. He's uh, basically uh, letting his uh, HQ open and daring the runner to run with the idea that he doesn't have anything worth taking. No, you've got to hit the delete. Yeah. So what's happening here is that the, the parasite is filling up with, with uh, virus counters and every time the virus counter gets one, it uh, minuses a strength off this ice. So it's three virus counters, yes. makes the strength zero, which kills the ice. And now we can get straight into the HQ. But I don't think there's anything in there. Oh, there is actually. There is an agenda in the HQ and it is open. This could uh, this could be a score for Frizz right now. Yeah, it's uh, very likely that we'll see a score because uh, Fritz like, can simply play that imp and he's definite that he's going to see at least two different cards in HQ. And if he plays that third imp, he's going to see every card in HQ and trust two of those. Exactly. 
So instead, he's drawing the card. I'm surprised. I was actually expecting him to uh, go imp, imp, run, run or something. No, no, he comes in. Yeah, he does like to keep his hands full. That's true. That's well, you've got, you've got to against, for Cinquetica. You've got to do it against Wayland. I mean, you know, like you said, with scorched earth. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I see he was holding a scorched earth in his hand. Uh, it's quite big. Yeah, you basically know that you're not going to. Uh, it's going to be much more difficult for him to flatline. There we go straight into that agenda. Mm -hmm. Boom, and now we're three back to three, of course, uh, yeah. He, uh, it was very difficult for the corporation to actually score that agenda, so I don't think he minds that so much. He's very happy that he scored the, the first three-pointer, uh, given the, how uh, it's important for the corporation to have a lot of points for the second match. Well, you know, there's been a lot of talk about, among my group about whether it's best to have your agenda points spread out or concentrated in large things like priority acquisition. And the mathematics actually works out that it's better to have less agenda cards, you know, like you... you it is, in. it is, absolutely. But you have to remember, first of all, it's a very difficult, to, it's much more difficult to score a five-point, five-cost agenda than a three-cost agenda. And the big agendas tend not to have that powerful effect. So it's very likely that uh, the your priority acquisitions and your... Uh, and your, what you call them, uh, your executive retreats are not going to help you as much as an essay or uh, uh, what you call it. Uh, true, true. The, the idea is that you do the super server build, you know, where you like build like these massive servers and they, it doesn't matter if they're running against your R&D because the chances of pulling the actual card is so small, you know. That is true. That is true. But it's a different kind of deck. And as I said, these agendas might be uh, reducing the chance for an HQ hit, but they're also much more difficult to uh, score. So they give, if you play with those kinds of agendas, I would also play with traps, so that I can actually bluff a big agenda when I'm instead uh, advancing a secretary or a Zumba. Yeah, because that would against, be good, good play. Uh, against big rig decks, like a uh, Kate, um, where they are meant uh, to run through your big uh, glacier, uh, it's a big problem if you cannot score an agenda as soon as you play it or in one without an advancement. Uh, is this actually broadcast live or is it being broadcast on a uh, on a uh, delay? So at the moment it's being broadcast to Twitch TV but nobody can see it by me. Okay, good stuff. Well, I think uh, Vizsla is definitely in a commanding position here. I mean, he's got, you know, he's got Exposing, he's got a Crypsis in hand, he's got a second Imp, he's got a Stim Hack. And he's got an account siphon. And what's, what, I mean, you know, what has poor old Cinquetica got? He's got a couple of uh, credit ga credit leeching ice. I don't know. And he's got a, a, a tick removal ice. It's not, it doesn't look good. Uh, Cinquetica is good for him at the moment because at the moment he doesn't want to be drawing any agenda. He wants to be building some economy. Exactly. To tell you the truth. He just wants to uh, play safe without risking his hand and start building a big ice on the... Uh, HQ. Did he manage, did he actually pay to get through the HQ? No. Where was he running? I was <laughs> lost track. Okay, he was running HQ. Okay, so he uh, avoid, ignored the first race and he let the first second race, uh, he eluded the second race, so he's in HQ now. Yeah. Oh no, he's not. He's actually ended the run. I, I was confused because afterwards he said, come on in. I forgot the music. So Fizzer used to be a, a really big name in the original Netrunner scene, and he was like a world champion, wasn't he, or something like that? European champion, so they tell me. Yep. Uh, not, uh, I wasn't around at the time in uh, Netrunner, so I don't really know oh, how much a, of it is true or not. This is a bad draw for uh, Sinquetica. He, he, he can play it without any advancements and score it in one turn, so it's not a huge deal. Mm. And uh, Fritzler doesn't have a... Ah, he does have 8 credits, so he can break through that enigma if he really wants to. Um, he's going to play uh, out, you know, yeah. Yeah, He is definitely going to play. Ooh. But I think uh, Fritz is not going to let him uh, just uh, have it like this. He's probably going to uh, keep him honest and check what he's playing. He has the infiltration over there, so there's no reason not to uh, check what that is. Because he does know the well running atlases. And that's two points he can't afford the corporation to get. Well, he's got the 8 credits. I mean, he can get through it as it is, can't he? Yeah, absolutely. Basically, what he needs to do is uh, infiltrate to check that an agenda, play uh, Crypsis, take a token on Crypsis, and run. Is it enough? I think that's enough. Yeah. You need three credits to break uh, through Enigma 
and he doesn't need to ignore the click. Now, the wizard's ability hasn't been used at all in this uh, in this run. I guess that's what you were saying before about the Wayland deck doesn't have a lot of uh, you know traps and discards that can really take advantage by wizard. Mm -hmm. Are we going to see that infiltration? Yes, it looks like it. Boom. That's not what the corporation wants to see. So he's still got eight credits left. So that's five to play Crixus. That's absolutely enough. Exactly the amount he needs to get through that server. Yeah. He's going to be left with zero credits afterwards. So unless the corporation is holding a sea source and two uh, and two score cells, he won't uh, actually do anything to him. But uh, there's well, no way he can actually kill him. Well, if Synquetica doesn't put down another another ice in front of HQ, he's just going to run an account siphon next turn and just take the traces. Yeah, but probably he's going to um, remove the traces afterwards. I don't think he's going to keep them. The risk is too high. Mm. What I mean is, like, uh, he can do an account siphon next turn and just go straight through that ice and, uh, you know, and then he'll have tons of money once again and the corporation will have none. So, I mean, that's, that's the move I'm expecting from Fritz next turn anyway. Mm. Rizzler, beg your pardon. To put my music down a bit. So is, uh, is there many people in the chat, like, uh, watching watching the broadcast? There's nobody in the broadcast at the moment, first of all, because they're not supposed to be. Um, they're supposed uh, because otherwise the uh, other players in the tournament might be able to see and uh, scout the decks. So ah, at the moment, right, right. Uh, the channel is private, and only I can uh, access it. Once I'm done, I usually uh, unhide it. And make it private, and make the sorry. I uh, make the video public. Uh, sorry, I make the channel public and hide the video. And uh, once the old players that were in the game drop from the tournament, then I post it on YouTube. Oh no, he's got to put down one of these end. Yeah, that was the cards. problem. But he can play it and score it immediately because it only has two advancement. So that's that's easy, an easy choice there. He's taken the bad publicity. Yeah. And now he's going to play out the. Probably Archer, I would say. Yeah, that the uh, Archer is going to go somewhere. The question is where. And um, that Cripsis can break through the Archer. But it does. It is quite costly. Well, if he doesn't put it in front of his HQ, he's in trouble. Ooh, here we go. Let's see if we're going to see it now. I, I, I strongly think we're going to see an account cipher right now. Mm, it's very possible. But maybe next time. Sequetica is at 10 credits. And... Uh, for an account cipher on the Fritzl, would have to uh, basically... Oh, he's just going to draw credits. Well, he didn't have the credits for an account siphon, so there's no no way he could do it. Can siphon zero? Yeah, but he still needs to break through the caduceus. Can't just uh, waltz into uh, HQ like that. Can't just uh, tell Nettie to murder. <laughs> yeah, you can. You can just uh, accept the trace if you don't pay the money. <laughs> no, because caduceus trace ends around, not the tag. Oh, it does too. God, sorry. I've been reading this card wrong. But what didn't get to see what he played? Let me check. He played another Atlas. Okay, interesting. I'm surprised he didn't actually play the Archer. Maybe, uh, yeah, it's actually interesting. I'm not sure. The Archer would have been much uh, preferable at the moment, I think. On the other hand, the runner may be expecting the Archer. Well, he does I'm very have... surprised why he didn't play the Archer. Well, he can. He, he does have the power to res this card. He does, but the Archer would allow him to res this card and score that agenda next turn. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, there's no way Crypsis is getting through Hadrian's War. Uh, with a Steam Hack? Yes, it is. Well, that's assuming and he has one. <laughs> which he does if have he to have. Siphons, and if he accounts Siphon him first, then he won't be able to raise that Hadrian, which is why it's another reason to play that uh, Archer first. Archer, he can raise after an account Siphon. Uh, here's a short gamble. Nice. Yeah, he can play it though. Now, it's always good to have a short gamble or a card like that in your hand. Like, uh, I find that uh, running out of credits is one of the most frustrating parts of this game, you know? Like, when you don't have credits, you feel like you can't do anything. And no matter how tactical the decision is to draw credits for your whole turn, you feel like you're wasting your turn uh, somehow, you know. And I it's think the that least, it, it is the least uh, valuable option you can do. But sometimes it works okay. Mm. So we're definitely going to him. He scored that uh, Atlas again. Oh, he kept destroying the agenda. There you go. Exactly. Going broke is a bummer, isn't it? Says Sekretico. Like that's the frustration that I was just talking about. Unfortunately, he's only one point away from winning now. Yeah. yeah. So if he manages to play that uh, card now. It's really putting Fritzer in a bad situation. I'm surprised that Fritzer didn't even run that server. He was really afraid of an Archer, I'm sure. And I'm pretty fair, fairly certain that uh, Synquetica did the calculation and said, okay, he needs two tokens or one token at least on the Crypsis to break. He had two credits. It would be 11 credits with a Steam Hack. 12 credits if he takes a credit. So there was not enough credits to break an Archer and an Enigma uh, at that moment. So that's why he didn't... Uh, 
He didn't run. You think that was a guy's play, though? He, I just don't know if it he's being aggressive play. enough. It was a bold play. And uh, sometimes, as a corporation, especially when you keep drawing agendas, you need to be bold. You need to uh, to score those agendas before uh, the, the runner has time to set up. And the runner, at some point, is thinking, OK, it can be yet another agenda. He must be drawing some traps or assets. And he's basically daring me to get in our server. So I think uh, Ooh, okay. I think Sequeda can easily win the game now. If uh, if Fritzer plays too conservatively, it can actually cost him. He has to be really aggressive right now. Absolutely, that's totally what he should be doing. The problem is the way the way it is. He has a uh, Sequeda has already six points. If he gets another uh, hostile takeover, he won the game immediately. As soon as he gets, if he doesn't. Uh, then Fritzer needs to keep running R&D every turn so that he won't lose the game. So he's in a really bad situation. He also he needs to check every face down card that goes into that remote server and keep running R&D. So it's really, really hard. And uh, as far as for us, Quetica, he didn't even need to do that. But okay, he's going for it. I'm wondering if he's going to play the Archer. No, he's not playing the Archer. If I was in Quetica space, I would probably wait until I had two cards in my hand that I could play on that server and then uh, play both of them one after the other so that uh, the runner doesn't have enough to run two times. Okay, we'll see if you're going to take the bait here. Hosted bounty he is... To. Well, it's not enough to win, but, like, I mean, you'd be expecting it to. He has six points. He only needs one point to win. For, obviously, for Filter, it's not enough to win. Oh, I thought he had but five. But he has to cool. I, no, no, he's got six. I just read I read Proje uh, Project Atlas wrong. <laughs> it's... So now it's, Fritzer is really in a difficult situation. This is exactly the situation you want to be as a corp. You need to score a lot of agendas early, and then you have the opportunity to play your assets in your fortified server and uh, let the runner waste click after click running that server because otherwise you may win. Mm, so what's he going to do here? I mean, he's got to run the server. I mean, he... He has, has he got, he hasn't, Synquetica has enough to res the wall. Yeah, I think he's going to run the server. Yeah, so he's going to have to use his uh, stim hat. Yeah. Or, the other option is, how much, how much credits has he got? He's got seven credits, which is enough to get through into his HQ, and he could account siphon and then run on the other server, and then try and force him so he's not able to res ice. And that might the problem be... is, the token on Crips is for every run on HQ. Yes. So that is practice to run those two account siphons. And that would still leave Synquetica with three credits, which is enough to score an agenda. So he can't really do that. He may go for a siphon, but I guess he will go for a steam hack instead. I, at this moment, he just can't, he can't afford to let that card stay like that. This is the kind of situation as a corporation where he drew so many agendas and that actually helped him. Whereas as corporations, many play, corporation players, when they draw agenda after agenda, uh, it's really hard for them because uh, they say, oh, I keep drawing agenda and nothing useful. I just feel that Fritz, uh, uh, Frizzler could have been more aggressive this game, you know? Like, the, it seemed, he seemed to be doing a lot of credit draws when there was opportunities to do runs. And, you know, it, yeah, you, and you can't very, win unless you run. He's a very conservative and consistent player. Um, he's not playing bad, uh, he's, but he's just not following the uh, run carelessly motif of many runners. Is there many? And I think it's, it's his play. Is there much dynamical changes between the original Netrunner and this new game? I mean, this new game is quite different, isn't it? The dynamic of the game is pretty much the same. The bad publicity changed things a bit, but the bad publicity was not that big in the old game. There you game. go. Count Siphon. Okay. So he's going to Siphon him and then probably run with a Steam hack on the other server. That's it. Let's see how this is uh, really going to put it down to the wire. We're going to have a six all, and this is the time. This is a great time for Stim Hack too, because the uh, the you know the problem with Stim Hack obviously is the brain damage, right? But uh, this late in the game, if you don't have the cards in your hand, you're probably not going to win. Yeah, no, I think it's not the uh, brain damage he's afraid of at the moment. Mm, exactly. And he does have uh, plus three carapace, so he's fairly safe against the uh, score stone. Why is he asking to res? Is he running on the remote server? No, he's uh, running on the. Uh, oh right, right. He's running on the uh, HQ, um, but before he actually accesses, the runner has an opportunity to raise something. So he may be raise enough cards, enough upgrades or assets, so that the um, account siphon doesn't steal as many money. Yeah, gotcha. But in this case, obviously, it does make a difference. Uh, sense for Sequetica to waste his money. It's really interesting to see how. Uh, uh, Fritz is going to play it. If he removes the tags right now instead of running again, he's lost. On the other hand. He should, because he knows Synquetica doesn't have any cards in his hands. He only has one card. It's 
almost impossible he has uh, the luck that he uh, draws another. Oh, he's running on the remote ser server, there's no worries, but the interesting thing is that the, the credit swing from that account siphon has put Sin Quetica underneath the 10 credits needed to raise Hadrian's Wall. Yep. So he probably won't even need to use his stim hack because he should have tons now. What's he got? He's probably got, yeah, yeah 14 he's credits. he's probably going to do it anyway because, uh, well, he's probably doing like a mental calculation in his head at the moment. It costs him, uh, an archer would cost him 10 and uh, an enigma will cost him 3. So he doesn't need to use a uh, stim hack. So that's why he's not using it. He, he has in his mind the most expensive eyes he, eyes he might face. And uh, none of them is enough to require a stim hack. Exactly, yeah. Okay, breaks Enigma. So he's going to snipe that agenda, and he, he's in a really good situation because he doesn't have anything to lose from those tags, and he can take them out at his leisure next turn. It would be actually quite nasty if uh, Synquetica was running closed accounts. A lot, of people, a lot of people do think that the, the tagging system in this game is a little under, underdeveloped. I mean... The, it it seems that you can have you can have gains with people. Oh, have he won the game! Wow! No. Oh. This guy he has all the luck. <laughs> Unbelievable! What were the chances of pulling out another takeover? But so that's the thing you get with Wayland. Wayland often has a lot of these small cards that have small amounts of agendas. So you pull tons and tons and tons of agendas, and I think it really does change up the whole flow of the game from having you know all your agenda points concentrated on a few cards and your agenda points spread out on a mass of cards. Mm -hmm. okay. Alright, then that's game. Going to go next the next game, but the good thing is that Fritzer does have uh, six points uh, of uh, leeway to uh, win the next game, so he um, only needs to win before the corporation scores six points. Or basically, he needs to win before the corporation loses, and then it's a tiebreaker. So it's going to be definitely an interesting match. And uh, yeah, I'll see you in a bit. <laughs>
set until the trace amount that don't think Wyrm was uh, used at all. But it's funny how one card from the Shapers actually made Wyrm quite a powerhouse. Looks like uh, Sig Quaker is on a bit of a bathroom break. Yeah, maybe you can take the opportunity to explain some of the cards to your reader, to your viewers. <laughs> but yeah, there's nothing else to say at the moment. I'm quite glad that we're seeing two Anarch players. Um, of course, I'm still rooting for uh, Fritzler. Not only because he's European, but because he has the balls to play Wizard, which everybody con considers the worst runner out there. I like Wizard. I play Wizard. <laughs> yeah, but I play too. All my, uh, almost all my Anarch decks at the moment are Wizard. Come on, he's wearing, and, uh, a, he's wearing a Zork t-shirt. How could you not like the Wizard? <laughs> true. How can you not? He's also a master gamer. And he probably looks like uh, about half of the players playing other in Netrunner. Well, I actually heard that uh, that art is based upon one of the designers of from FFG. That wouldn't surprise me in the slightest. So, what are the, what are the other what are the other runners and, and identities for corporations that we've seen coming out of the competition? I mean, I'm guessing criminal. We're we seeing a lot of criminal and a lot of Wayland. Criminal Wayland is absolutely the most common. It's sickening how many of them there are. Fortunately, not every. Co uh, not every, uh, yeah, oh, not every... Uh, we're back. New York Katana's out. No, actually, Fritz is starting his turn because he wants to start planning with his uh, uh, extra card. Oh, he can enough. use the time for the bathroom to actually plan the game. Um, yeah, so we've seen quite a lot of them. Fortunately, they're not all playing copy-paste decks. Uh, we've seen one NBN player, Fast Advance, that, was, uh, uh, that lost the game, and I've actually casted it. And uh, that was quite an interesting match because he was completely caught unprepared by the runner, just straight up ignoring all the tags. That's the thing. A lot of people, uh, a lot of people think the tagging system is not quite as developed as it uh, can be. You know. Uh, depends. For example, in Wayland decks, tagging is super scary, mm. especially with the uh, Project Atlas down, uh, because they can just uh, find the scorched earth and finish you off. In other decks. Most players, many players use tagging by itself, you know, with no help as a, as a stopgap to the runner, to the trust resources. But by itself is not enough. You really need to splash some cards to hurt with the tag. So a very good one is obviously a closed accounts. That it's very splashable. It's only one influence. But uh, even a freelancer can actually help. What's that, what's that new card? I mean, I'm only up to Cyber Opus in my own collection, but uh, I can't remember the name of it. It's a NBN card, and it allows you to advance a card of the amount of tags. Cause that is from the core, that is uh, Psychographics. That's Psychographics, that's it, yeah. Is that, yeah. Because that, that, this, uh, this is used sometimes in uh, fast advance decks. Well, I, 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 I'm seeing that card a lot, you know, because that card, that card's really starting to come more powerful because of the fact that people are just ignoring tags, straight up ignoring tags. You know, there's not bit, so many of those. But the problem well, is, I've seen a few. A if you have only a few people that ignore tags, um, oh, poor play there from Fritzer. He's just leaving his uh, HQ open, betting that the runner does not run an imp or does not have an imp in his hand. Oh, that's going to sting. That is going to hurt. That's why I love your Katana Splashes, because very few people expect it, and it's so devastating at the first hand. <laughs> because if you consider people mulligan so that they have a, a, good hand. a good hand, and you go like, bam, your hand is gone. <laughs> so you basically destroy their original advantage. And now he's, he has to consider, if he goes ahead and accesses, he may hit a snare. So is he going to do it? It's a scary proposition. Oh, he's got, he's got to, he's got to, you've got to, uh, yeah, he's, he's going to go for it. Yeah. I mean, after you've taken all that damage, you have to take the risk. True. Sometimes the risk is too much, though. Oh, what a lucky draw. It gets deja vu. Yeah, he can pull his crypts out if he needs it. Yeah. But other than that, it's nothing great. Yeah. He only can get his crypts. He probably wants going to draw for a virus and then... Uh, get his scripts back with the virus. So as I was saying, Katana is so great, but uh, if they uh, run Mimic, you get so frustrated because Mimic just breaks it like that. But it's the perfect time to pull it it's in the early game. Yeah, so I suspect we're going to see that uh, Victor in HQ, Rototaret in remote, and uh, Adonis campaign behind it. Yeah, you know, I, I'm a, I really think that uh, pr the, the campaigns can be left unprotected. I mean, even if in the really early game, Sinking their credits is a really is really good, you know. Even if you lose your asset, they've got to spend the money to trash. That's one of the things I really like about Wizard they, is that you can. In the case of runners, you usually want a runner. You, the, you 
the runner he usually has an easier time making credits than the corp. Yes, in in the long so run, definitely. Even the short run, even if uh, both players just uh, spend the turn taking credits, the runner makes more credits than the corp. Uh, the problem is that uh, every runner wants to keep the corp poor, because then they cannot raise ice. Whereas if you keep the runner poor, you need to have ice already for it to make a difference. So at the start of the game, it's more important for the corp to make money than it is for the runner to lose money. Once you have a decent amount of uh, ice, then you can look into making the runner lose money. But I'm pretty certain we see that the uh, pad campaign go down. Yeah, definitely. Well, that definitely does make a lot of sense. But uh, yeah, it always it always it always seems to me that from the from the games that I've been playing, that the even though the runner can obviously make more money, the runner can often be in a situation where it can't it can't afford to get through the ice that is there. You know what I mean? Like basically, this this server the uh, the R and D server is basically immune for the time being, yeah. and that and that is all you need to protect the yeah. server at this time. Absolutely, the th that that's why uh, neural katanas and uh, roto turrets and uh, hunters and uh, all that stuff is really good at the start of the game. Every corporation should run on some of these instead of wall of statics and uh, enigmas, because enigmas and wall of statics are good at ending the run. But they're not good for your central servers. For your central servers, what you really need is uh, something that uh, will hurt the runner when they face check it as much as it will hurt you. Okay, just use Deja Vu to get Medium and Crixis back out of the graveyard. Not okay. too not too surprising. I'm suspecting he go for Crypsis. No, he has actually not go for Crypsis. Okay, interesting. What is he playing? It's too expensive to keep breaking a katana with a Crypsis, especially when you have no economy. Okay, so this is his chance. Fizzlers can really start putting up his defenses now. Yeah, he's the agenda. I'm wondering now, I'm not sure if he's going to protect the HQ or if he's going to make a remote server and play that agenda in. Unfortunately, the, the um, prototype is, uh, neither of his eyes can protect against Crypsis very well. So it's very dangerous if he does it. However, he can do a very nasty trick. Play well, the got... Rototarret, corporate troubleshooter and the pro a priority requisition. Exactly. And that can actually... The problem is he doesn't have enough money to do that. He can't raise the roto turret and actually use the corporate troubleshooter with any effect. Well, he might pretty soon. I mean, if he just uh, spends a couple of turns, you know, getting those credits from a donor's campaign. But he didn't actually do that, so let's see how he plays. What do we have trust yet? So we've seen two ice trust. Yeah. Okay, so he's going for the full protection. I'm not really liking that uh, Victor in archives uh, because... Um, if the runner wants to, he can just get in. And the, the runner only wants to pass that server once. So that victor is only going to waste him two credits for one turn. Two clicks for one turn. It's not a big deal. Uh, clicks are important. I mean, but unless he's actually discarding into that, into there, it's not really going to be a tempting target. I guess yeah, he's thinking... Yeah, but he's not... Well, you have to... You have to th I mean, with Noise's ability, you've really got to consider that that's going to be happening, though, that you've got to protect that area. And here comes a stim hack. Where is he going to? On archives. Holy shit, that was a good bluff. Ritzler just totally outplayed him there. Yeah. He made him think the uh, archives had something important and it's completely empty. Exactly. So, wasting very important resources for that run. He might not even raise this card. Yeah. He doesn't have to raise. There's no point. He can waste a click for the uh, Crypsis, but uh, in the card scale of things, that click is not that important as the three credits that Ritzler is going to save. <laughs> He's suspecting that he's not going to. He's okay. That was a beautiful example of a bluff. You're right. Absolutely fantastic play there. I was surprised that he actually did it. Even if it was, uh, if it had something important there with two cards, even if it was two three point agendas, you're not in such a rush to get in. You won't win the game from it, and uh, you may actually waste your time because many corporations just uh, preemptively arch ice up uh, archives just in case. Uh, you trust too many cards too fast and then run. But yeah, that uh, Steam hack is really going to hurt, especially if it takes out that liberated account. He just wants to remove your virus counter, mate. Isn't it? <laughs> yeah, Sequitico was just a little confused about why he would res that ice if you can't read the chat. Makes some, makes some sense. Uh, Sequitico is probably going to run that server again. Um, so these uh, clicks from Crypsis are going to add up, obviously. Unless he pulls a yoga. Um So... The idea, I, I think the reason why uh, Fritzel did is that he's not rushing to do any agendas and uh, he wants to slow down the runner in the meantime. 
he's probably not going to be hurting for money either. At least that's what he thinks. And Sinkodik is Sinkodik is a very very chatty player. Uh, I'm all, always wary of chatty players in bluffing games. So easy to just let things slip if you're not really careful about what you're saying. Yeah, that's why I'm always I, I prefer to say nothing uh, when I'm being teased because uh, <laughs> even if I uh, play, if I joke or whatever, they can easily guess through my words. Uh... Yeah, that's what probably why. Synquetica wanted to run early because he's afraid the HP is going to archive memories, any agendas that were there. Okay, so he's now got two uh, agendas in hand. It's starting to get a bit uh, scary because uh, that roto turret in, uh, in HP is not going to help. So what he probably wants to do at the moment is play that uh, play that copper trouble shooter in HQ. This is a uh, definite defense against the uh, Crypsis, unless he steam hacks again. And uh, you can he make make him think that it's a Nash or something, so he's not going to be so eager to run it. Yeah. So the brain damage trust Eclipses, so that was a good hit for the uh, runner. Both of the other cards were, I think, better than Eclipses in his hand. There goes down okay. corporate tribal shooter, as predicted. And probably going to take two credits. Of course, the problem is that uh, he doesn't have that trouble shooter now to play anywhere else, which would be really nice if he had uh, if he had played that. Uh, Roto target in a remote, he would be able to now start advancing agendas. Yeah, but I mean, what what could I mean? He's basically he is advertising that there's something there. I mean, this this is he, this is not a bluff. It's not, but he's uh, the the whole point is that he knows that even if the runner knows that he has something there, he can't get through. Oh my oh, god! <laughs> oh dear, he's got a okay, draw. Okay, what he can what he can do now? No, he can also archive memories and get the knife from the archives. Ah, oh, he does have archive memories, yes. I think that's what we might see, no. No, he's just making sure he won't get into R&D, HQ. Yeah, just pulling the credits for uh, Corporate Troubleshooter. So what's going to happen is if he does run against it, he can just pump Corporate Troubleshooter to create the ice strength higher, which would mean that he won't be able to afford to pay for Christus. Yeah, he's so so glad that the runner didn't decide to run R&D instead. <laughs> because his HQ at the moment is so... Uh, vulnerable. Okay, so look Fritz at this card. Liberated accounts. This is not a good card. It is a good card. No. Believe me. It no, is. it's not. I'm not going to go to the pros and cons, but it has some of the f best uh, rate of returns uh, compared. If you have the money to play it, it's brilliant. If you don't have the money to play it, uh, it's t it's a bit... Uh, it's, it's taking down your tempo. But it doesn't. But it's it, got the same amount of returns as Magnum Opus, except it's like more expensive and slower. And it takes less clicks. It does take less clicks. That is definitely true. I and guess that, that is a plus. If, if you suddenly need a burst of money, you can use it. I'm suspecting we're going to see Fritzer play that katana in the remote and uh, possibly mandatory upgrades. And even even we may even see him archive memories and other eyes in front of it. You see. The problem is the katana won't let him um, stop the run. Well, he's definitely going to have to draw cards. You're breaking up a little bit. I'm thinking at this moment, Fritzer is ready to, to sacrifice that agenda. So uh, he's probably going to let the runner uh, steam hack it if he gets it. And then he's going to um, play the priority requisitions. Mandatory upgrades is just such a hard agenda to score. Six credits he needs for that. Yeah, but it's game changing. If you score it early, it completely gives oh. such an advantage to the corporation. It's so powerful, it's so powerful. Yeah. The good thing is if you don't score it, if they, uh, if you put like a few advancements and they steal it, uh, it's only two points again. So it's not a huge loss like a priority requisition is. I think Sequentius would probably be filling up his hand. I mean, he knows that uh, there's a Jinteki splash in this deck. Yeah, now is the time for Fritzler to go at three advancements on that card. Mm -hmm. Or he may even play that card. Fortunately, the runner can break it. Yeah. He could... Uh, he could, he could, he could uh, archive memories and ice like you were saying before, but you know, uh, whack, whack. I think he's, go he's going to go advanced three times, but uh, I'm not absolutely sure. The Synquetica has 11 credits, so it's tricky to figure out what he's going to do. I think the best player at the moment would be Heimdall at the server, because this means that uh, Cripsis cannot get tokens and run that server. There we go. Yeah. In ooh. No, apparently, yeah. Smart play, because if uh, Runner Sunderly plays a, a, a medium, he has a problem. So that's pretty decent play there, protecting himself with a medium. On the other hand, he does have most of his uh, good agendas in his hand, so he m maybe want to rush a bit. Well, if he, if he does play, you know, runs on the HQ, then Brizzle is going to have to basically empty his credit pool to pump, to pump that one small ice. 
and that's just going to yep. be a complete giveaway. You know, and then he's not going to have the credit. Well, he's not going to have the credits to pump it next turn. So it does have to be. He will trust Scripsis. Remember, the Rotator trust is in program. This is true. Okay, we're going to see that. We are going to see a Scripsis being trusted. Of course, it will cost a uh, Frittle quite a bit. He needs to pump it to 11 strength, 12 strength. He needs to pump it to uh, 11 strength to uh, stop the run. But it's going to hurt quite a bit. I think it's worth doing it. <laughs> Quickly, it's, everyone gets out their calculators. <laughs> it's far too dangerous to leave that uh, HQ open. Unfortunately, he will trust the Crypsis, but the Granner is going to keep his 11 credits. So it's going to hurt uh, Frickler quite a bit. He basically lost all the economy he acquired until now. On the bright side, he can just start advancing that agenda on the remote without fear. Or without a lot of fear. Mm, how much is he going to pump it? 11. That's all he needs. 11 credits. He needs exactly 11 to uh, stop him. There we go. 11 credits. <laughs> and that clips is going down. <laughs> yeah. Bold play. Uh, bold play. Necessary play there from Fritzer. It's, it's one of the biggest boosts. I think my biggest boost with uh, Corporate Troubleshooter is 16 credits. Okay. So that brings him down to 7. That leaves Synquetico with 11 credits. Yeah. Now, so the question if, is, if is that he really... Sorry? Well, what I'm what saying, saying? What, what I was trying to say is that uh, if Synquetico can draw an ice that can get through, he could really swing this game around next turn. A nice break, yeah. Mm. But I think now that uh, Fritzer knows that he knows it's a uh, rototar, he's either going to draw, try to draw an ice or he's going to use his archive memories. And Synquetica is now running through his deck to find that mimic, or his second Crypsis, if he doesn't run mimic. Oh, more, more credit gen, just when he needs it. Yeah, uh, that's hand buffer, so I don't think he's going to use it now. He, he's got eight credits worth of ice in front of that agenda. Yeah, he only needs one. He only needs the rototar behind it. Mm. So, tricky play there for a Fritzler. If, he, if the runner manages still those agendas, it's automatically a tie. So they need to go to the tiebreaker afterwards. Yep, he's going to try and uh, gain that agenda. Or maybe not. Let's see. Three. Three that leaves him with the four to, to res Rota turret. Synquetic is going to come through and find the uh, nice breaker. And it uh, depends on if he actually finds it. That is going to depend if he wins, uh, if the game is a tie or not. The best he can draw at the moment the uh, is a mimic. Well, no one, two. I would have helped, but he doesn't have a breaker now. Three. Oh! <laughs> if he got a parasite one turn earlier. He would have been able, he shouldn't have done it now. Now the corporation knows that he has the uh, parasite. Now the corporation is immediately going to ice it up. Well, he's going to score. He's going to score this agenda next turn anyway. Yeah, and then he's going to gain a click from it. So he, he can use that click to actually play an ice. Of course, he's going to not be able to raise that ice. So. Problem is, he cannot score that agenda and protect HQ, and he cannot protect HQ and protect that uh, agenda. So he's really in a tough situation now, what to do. I think if he doesn't draw an agenda... Well, he could lose both of these right now. I don't know. Is he out of clicks? No, he's got to... Yeah, he's out of clicks. He used all his clicks to draw. So why did he play that last click and actually uh, run the run the ice that turn? You think he should have done it, left it as a surprise? Yes, absolutely. Okay, now he has three cards and two agendas. I think it's better if he actually plays the mandatory upgrades and makes text out and then use the uh, the last click to gain a credit or something. It's a big risk if he if the runner may, will probably run uh, a lot of times, but there's nothing else he can do. If he can't protect that uh, the HQ and protect that agenda, so he doesn't have enough chip ice. If he had like a, a one point ice, a wall of ice or something, he would be able to do it, but he can't. Do you think he's going to draw a card? No, I think he's going to... It's a really tough situation. I would probably score that agenda. That's what I think maybe, I'd do too. Just that extra, that extra click in the long run could be more valuable. The problem is, uh, again, if he scores that agenda and the runner takes the whole turn and runs on his hand, that is a very good chance he's going to steal both of them. So then you rely on luck. If he doesn't score that agenda, there's just no way he can protect that agenda and his AQ at the same time. Well, from, what I, is going to want that. from what I see, I don't think, think Frizzler is a real rely on luck kind of guy. He seems, exactly. pretty he seems pretty methodical. <laughs> but at the moment, he doesn't have an option. Mm. He knows, he already knows he cannot protect both of these servers. So either he'll have to get to let his uh, mandatory upgrades go, or he's going to have to protect HQ. And I think he's obviously going to try and protect HQ, but uh, he's going to sacrifice his uh, archive memories now. He's going to be. He's going to look for another auto turret, probably, that can be res for the same price. Auto turret. I don't like. He's basically he's sacrificing his mandatory upgrades. He's thinking, okay, two points is not a big deal as uh, six points. Uh, the problem is if the runner gets another parasite, that gambit there is going to completely bite him in the ass. Well, we'll see how it plays out. It really depends on what he draws next. But either way, he's only going to be able to protect one. 
I think uh, if he if he does run on the main the main uh, HQ, it's probably going to be the best thing. He's going to deja vu out that Crypsis again, probably. No, and, he's going to deja vu Parasite. And the Parasite, yeah. Oh, Crypsis. that's so bad. I think now Fritzle should just let that uh, uh, that remote uh, that the central open. He he doesn't have a chance to protect, so he might as well get him steal what he's going to steal. If he if he raises it, he's losing that agenda. And he's going to get the runs into HQ. That was a, such a lucky draw. I mean, you could, he could not have asked for a better card unless he just draw, drew uh, Parasite straight uh, I off think the better, deck. Kind of, kind of. The problem is he now doesn't have enough money to actually do anything. So he has to run now, but wherever he runs now is a problem. He should have run naked. It was actually a bad play what he did. Really? If he, actually, if he had actually run naked on HQ, he knows it's a roto turret, yeah? So he knows he's just going to end the run. And next, immediately he can run the other mod server. He doesn't know what I see. This could be a wall of ice or whatever. But whatever it is, with two credits, it can't be bad. The worst, the absolute worst, it can be maybe an, uh, 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 at some hunter combo. But uh, that's very unlikely. And now he allows, he allowed the Fritzler to score his mandatory upgrades, which means he's going to go advance, 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 and play an agenda in that remote. So he's saving his one agenda, because he can then raise one of his agendas in that remote. And that comes a toll boot, one of my favorite cards. Yes. But it may be that Fritz is just going to um, play that toll booth in HQ now. You see. I would even trust that Roto turret. There's no point in it anymore. Again, the problem is if he plays that toll booth in R&D, the runner can get into remote, if he actually raises it. So how long has this competition been going for? Uh, two months by now. And it's been the same the same pool, or is this like round two, or we're getting towards the finals, or? This is the first elimination round of 32 players. So this is uh, uh, the 32 players in the matchup, and uh, the. Um, okay, so he puts down. Uh, round, round Swiss. And the top 16 from each side managed to go to the uh, elimination round. And we're going to play four rounds of elimination, and then we'll have the winner of the two. Well, he's definitely protected up the HQ. He put down the toll booth. He didn't do any advancement, so he could have the 8-2 resid as well. So now, it's probably he's going to lose that mandatory upgrade if the runner runs. Unfortunately, given last turn, I'm not so sure the runner will run. <laughs> of course, the runner doesn't know what that extra ice is, so... It could be something nastier. And he doesn't know what that uh, card there with the three tokens is. It could be a trap. He has to be wondering by now why it's not raised yet. I was just thinking the same thing. Okay, so he's running out of to make sure he can uh, get some data stacker tokens. So That's he exactly can uh, break for free. Uh, fortunately, oh, he did actually trust an agenda. Neat. <laughs> that was surprising. Yeah, I didn't see that agenda being trust. Now he has one run to make, and I'm wondering what it's going to be. Probably a steam hack into HQ. No, he's not there and doing anything. Okay, you, now you he ran out of clips. Oh, perfect. Ah, uh, couldn't have asked for something better. He can actually score the mandatory, and then with a the click that he gains from the mandatory upgrades, play the uh, hedge fund. And then have credits to res. Yep. Frizzle is looking extremely good right now. Yeah, he needs to do it. I mean, if he doesn't do it, I will be really surprised now. I mean, what other options does he have? I mean, I guess he, he can could... leave the mandatory there with the three clicks, uh, the three advancements to bluff that it's a uh, trap. But I'm not really liking that solution. I think he should take the initiative now. Yeah, but what advantage would he get from doing that? He could Here make more money. Uh, why did he take that first? Why didn't he advance first? No. He's going to play the, another agenda. Yeah, or he's going to put out the campaign. Yeah, maybe. But then he has basically just two agendas in his hand. There we go. Maybe go he'll draw a card. Credits. Maybe he'll draw a card now. No, he takes a credit. Okay. Interesting play there. Well, now he's got the 14 credits, which means he can res the right Tundra and he can res the toll booth. So he's basically yeah, protected the problem, both of those areas. The problem is that he has two agendas and one uh, card, other card in his hand. So uh, if the runner runs his hand now, it's uh, quite scary. Well, the runner's only got five credits. I mean, he does have t yeah. he does have two points where the data suckers, but even so. Yeah, he can't break the toll booth yet. He needs one more credit. So I will have to see how it goes. Maybe he'll run again on that uh, uh, on that victory, and then he can also steam hack, obviously. Yeah? But uh, Steam hacking into R&D is scary. Oh, it could so easily provide nothing, but very, very cautious play by Fizzler. But mm. uh, very correct play is what I've noticed. Because I definitely would have scored, I definitely would have done what you were saying. I would have scored that agenda and then put the next, the next uh, one of his agendas inside that server. Actually, no, that wouldn't be the best play. I think scoring that agenda and then, um, and then playing uh, the hedge fund would be better. 
Okay, so he's going to try and trust that uh, neural katana and start running on... Uh, yeah, he's trying to split the economy of uh, Fritzler at the moment. That's what he's getting for at, I think. I'm also surprised to see that uh, account cipher. Yep, he's out, he's out of MUs. He probably didn't think that through. That's such an expensive splash. Look at that. Four... Uh points. He must only have one of these in his deck. I uh, have a noise deck with two of them. It's uh, really great at uh, forcing the corporation to Whoa, defend just, everywhere. Why? That, he just uh, deleted medium. Why is he running on... Uh, why is he... Because then he just, I think he just wants to force their, uh, the corporation to raise something. He wants to keep the corporation poor at the moment. But it's not going to work because... What is that card? I think it's a Heimdall. If he runs that Heimdall with his last click, it's going to hurt. Okay. It just seems, seems you know, a waste of a waste of a parasite to not even use uh, the medium's ability to be able to scour the deck more. Maybe we'll finally see that the uh, mandatory upgrades being raised. <laughs> well, he's definitely going to take the credits. Yeah. Fizzler is now rolling in the dosh. Oh, nice. and another corporate troubleshooter. My God. That's great. That is fantastic. Question of where to play. R&D would be an option. Well, R&D is definitely not as scary now that it's uh, he doesn't have medium. But he hasn't really drawn many agendas yet, has he? I mean, we've seen... He, he's got enough agendas in his hand to win. And how many yeah. more can there possibly be? I just think uh, R&D is not where he should be worried. I mean, that's not really a worry, especially with medium gone. So... I could even... Managed expect. to uh, delay playing that agenda. It actually helped at the moment. That's what I mean, like... Really cautious play, but actually correct, like completely correct play. Very, very impressive. Uh, I, I just, uh, I mean, I'm not, I'm not in these guys' league, obviously, but uh, the, the patience required to not play that agenda and pay it so quickly, I thought was very, very good. Yeah. But I do think it's a mistake. The runner should have known he could have scored that agenda if he really wanted. Yeah, to. it's incredible. He knows. He's saying that in the in the in the chat. He's, he's basically saying I should have gone and got it. And I think that's yeah. a lot of things the runners have. Like That's one of the frustrating things about runner. In most situations, you were able to get out of it if you were playing yeah. either more aggressive or more defensive, you know? Yeah. If you Actually, there's a lot of time where you just need to be looking at the math of the situation, saying, okay, if I run naked in R&D, he's going to trust my medium, but then I get into his remote. And maybe he was like, okay, if that's not an agenda, it, it really hamstrung me. So he's wasn't, uh, he was not really brave enough to do it. Okay, so he's uh, saving that agenda for his remote. That's good play there. So his hand now is a bit less scary. I was expecting to see corporate troubleshooter go down as well at the same time, but uh, again... He again, he didn't have enough clicks. Again, though, if he runs R&D, he won't be able to raise that remote as well, or his HQ. So if I was in the place of the runner, I would probably go... Uh, uh, run first the uh, R&D to force him to raise something and then run somewhere else. Mandatory upgrade. If I was a port, okay, okay, here comes the skim hack. Where is he going? He's got to be going to the remote. Yeah, he's definitely going to the remote. I think the corporation should let him have it, to tell you the truth. Yeah. What, what did he spend all his uh, clicks on? I mean, he put, he, put out, uh, he put out the agenda. Why didn't he put uh, Troubleshooter on there as well? Because he scored mandatory upgrades last time. So I think he's going to raise both eyes because he wants to take away the clicks from the runner. Yeah. Unfortunately, once the runner knows both of his eyes, if he plays another priority requisition, he can steam hack again. Well, of course, the steam hack might take the other steam hack out, so we have to see how it goes. Ooh. Do you allow returnsies in a, in a competition game? <laughs> yeah, he didn't target, so I think it was a mistake. I think it's usually up to the other player to decide whether it's all... No, but like, uh, I'm still a little bit fuzzy about why he didn't play Corporate Troubleshooter. Could you go through that again for me? Like he played, he used one click to put out priority, to put priority requisition no, he into had, the server. No, he had uh, three clicks. Four he used clicks. Three clicks to, no, he had three clicks because that was the turn he actually scored mandatory upgrades. So his first three clicks he used to score mandatory upgrades. No, no but he's had a turn. From since... scoring mandatory upgrades. Hey? No, no, he's had a turn since then, hasn't he? No, no. That was that, that exactly the turn after scoring mandatory upgrades. Ah, oh, right, right. Okay. Sorry. It is like about 5 a.m. in the morning. <laughs> so he's going to take that agenda without any cost to him either. But he still has one again. Fritzl does have... Uh, need to prevent him from scoring one more point. Of course, if he scores one more point, he wins the game. Uh, if he scores one more point, it's going to be two points at least. So Either he wins the game or he loses the game. There's no opportunity for a tie. Uh. <laughs> so the pressure is on. 
really, really on. I mean, surprisingly, because I think Frizzle has really been in command Ooh, this whole and game. And the last steam hack is gone. Now, if Steve Frizzle actually checks what was discarded and sees the other steam hack, he probably will play the other agenda and the corporate troubleshooter as well. So that would be the smart thing to do if I was Frizzle. Check the, what the runner lost. You know, you see now three steam hacks there. So you go like, okay, agenda, corporate troubleshooter, and uh, I can raise it. And if you're trying to get in, I can do the job. Of course, you, the problem is... Can you just look through his, uh, his discard pile in this application? Yes. Nice. But it's tricky. Now the runner is going to go for R&D directly. So he really needs to uh, either take the money to protect it or put that wall of ice in front. So it's tricky either way. It's difficult to, to decide what to do. You can go for luck and say, okay, he's not going to hit another agenda in R&D. We've seen already uh, five agendas. But uh, as I said, Fritzler is not big on luck. He's already got two brain damage. If he puts down him to your no. wall, if he puts down the wall in front of those things, he won't be able to activate Crixus and run on that server without taking brain damage hit. No, but uh, he can win with even uh, five brain damage. That is true. <laughs> I think the katana at the moment is more than enough to stop him. That's a bit uh, nasty to have to go in the middle of the game. Well, that'll be a forfeit, but wouldn't it? Concede. Actually, I shouldn't ask that because uh, then uh, Fritzel must have delaying in purpose. Well, it's all down to this priority acquisition. But even if he scores that, it's not. It's, he still has to score a whole other agenda after this. Yes. It is a tricky business. How to protect... You know he's going to run R&D next time, most likely. And you know you can't protect everywhere. He's going to go for the money. I think that was... Uh, Pretty good. Let's see what he does with his life action. Another Crixus and another Account Siphon and a Magnum and a, Opus. Most, okay. Probably so just draw the credit it, here. But, yeah. but now Fritzer should probably, should, will probably start trusting something out. Now he has enough money to protect the uh, R&D a bit. So he's probably going to trust that uh, uh, Katana and play a nice in front. Oh, right. He can play that immediately and score it. Nice. Problem is, if he uses the ability and he's unlucky, he may actually lose the game. But <laughs> it's been a few agendas in the game, so I have the feeling that he may not be that unlucky. You mean by just so accelerated beta test could actually discard an agenda into his uh, archives? Exactly. Is that what you're saying? Exactly. Yeah, but I don't think he's desperate enough to go for that. He's probably going to go protect R and D uh, and play the agenda maybe with a corporate troubleshooter. It was a bit unlucky on the part of Fritzer that he drew so many agendas so early. If he didn't have to, um... oh, okay, he's cleaning viruses. Interesting. Well, he's got another clip he didn't have to, to go. Yeah, that was actually smart. Yeah. I forgot that he had that option. Uh, his uh, katana can protect him for a bit more. Um, yeah, um, it was a bit like that he drew so many agendas at the start because he f really forced him to rush to protect him. So he's not tempting the runner to uh, rush that server. I don't think the runner is going that to take the bait because he can't. We see how it goes. But uh, just for the people watching, that's not actually an agenda going down, though. That's the corporate troubleshooter. But that would yeah. look like an agenda, to probably, or or an agenda or something. But uh, it's basically a ruse. There's nothing in that server at all still. Still, it's pretty useful in the future when you are going to play your agenda. So now Fritzl has a pretty decent economy. He's protected in almost all servers. You know, mandatory um, upgrades is just so powerful versus a virus deck. Being able to s clear your viruses and then still play cards in the one turn is huge. I mean, that is huge. Yeah, it's really strong. That's why it costs six advancements, of course. Mm. And uh, you know, I just, I just feel, I still think, I still think it might have been better to score it earlier. And that, like, if he had this advantage earlier, he might not be in this position now. Yeah, obviously, but should have, would have. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Oh, the hindsight. You're going to see the Magnum come down at least. Ah, he trashed the Magnum Opus. Yeah, he trashed. What did the Magnum Opus get past? No, he trashed it. Aye. He didn't have enough memory, okay. He didn't have enough hand size. Okay, yeah, yeah. He's got two brain damage, so he can only have three cards. I'm but he... surprised he actually kept those two uh, siphons when he had two eyes in the HQ. Well, I guess the, siph the siphons are zero to cost. Hey, what's going on? There's a bug going on. No, I haven't seen any bugs. So maybe something bugged out in his end, but I don't know what. He's not running the latest version. It had a, a, a version error when he connected. Okay, so he's just going to eat the katana damage and uh, break through the other time. That's perfect. Mm -hmm. That is perfect for the uh, Sinquetica. Sinquetica can actually, uh, sorry, uh, Fritzer can even raise that corporate troubleshoot and trust the last scripts, but I don't think he will. I don't know. Maybe he will. But it's probably not worth the money. But of course, it's this going is... To cost a runner, going to cost a runner two to, to trust the corporate troubleshoot anyway, so... Well yeah, but it's not an agenda anyway. I mean, it was a good play. Yeah. So now, uh, we'll probably see. He's really in a bad position. 
I think we're going to see a concede after this fails. Would be no, my... I think he's going to actually use the corporate troubleshooter. <laughs> okay, sure. He's not going to raise the corporate troubleshooter. He he told us to wait because he wanted to have no further reactions. Excellent. That's a way to keep us excited, Fritzler. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the way you give information out as well. <laughs> okay. Ah, he pressed the escape a bit too early, I guess. Now Fritzler has a pretty good opportunity to uh, play something because the runner is completely penniless and no cards in hand and two brain damage yeah. even to just pass that katana he needs uh, three cards in his hand so exactly. the best he can do is take cards and run but then he cannot uh, break uh, what he can do actually is take three cards run and uh, then break the end around subroutine of roto and lose his cripsis but um, I think uh, Fritzel will take that into account Ooh. When he did connect, he had a he did have an error message. Unfortunately, the log doesn't go back that far. What's he saying? He says that when I picked at the corporate troubleshooter, he saw something like a parasite. <laughs> he he's done one run. Yes, he was run on his uh, second click. Oh, easy mark. What luck! Ah, perfect. That easy mark is going to help him quite a bit. Ooh, nice. Now he has quite a lot of money, and that the toll booth is perfect because he can end the run before it even begins. The question is where to go, what to put first. We really need to score those at, at some point. I put down toll booth and then put down priority acquisition. He also needs to protect archives in case he loses random. That is true, because he only needs one point. Yeah, but Any agenda will win. What to select to uh, avoid losing randomly like that? Well, he's got the wall. The wall is not enough because. Uh, Crips is just going to take a token uh, before he runs anyway. Okay, he's going to go score the agenda immediately. Mm -hmm. I don't think he's going to use it though. Okay, so he only needs a three-pointer now to win. Oh, pawn shop. Listen, hand, that pawn shop is going to hurt. Help. I wonder what he's looking for. Maybe his uh, last days of work, Crips. Oh, no, he already has a Crips. No, he's got a Crips. I'm not quite sure what he's digging for. Oh, yet another agenda. He can actually score it. No, he can't score it. He can score it in one turn if he just plays it now. So how is he going to play it? I think play that agenda and play the toll booth is the best way. And then you'd guarantee at least a tie break. <laughs> All the but agendas are coming at now. If he checks the archives, he knows he doesn't have any more steam hacks. But if he has a deja vu, he can get another steam hack. He's already he's played already... two deja vus, if I remember correctly. Yeah, he's played two. So it's a very low chance he'll have the last deja vu in his hand. And even if he has a steam hack, that's two for the deja vu, that's two credits. If he plays the uh, toll booth that he needs... Uh, Eight credits for the toll booth, so five plus three plus no, nine credits for the toll booth. Bread with scripts, so he needs one action as well. Two actions. I don't think it's possible for him to break through that server. So I think if he goes uh, toll booth and then uh, agenda, he can stop him. Exactly, to toll booth is uh, going to stop him dead already because he's he's only got four credits to play with. Yeah, yeah. The, the the question is if he what what to deal with a steam hack. If a steam hack is going to be enough. I so know. I think the probably the best thing he can do is. Play that toll booth and maybe play, play that agenda and maybe play another ice on R and D. Which ice would he choose though? I mean the only one he can afford, the ice wall. Yeah, which is not really gonna do anything, but I, this is gonna go in front. Yep, minus three. Yeah, that's the ice wall though. Okay, I'm not sure why he played the ice wall there. That was very cheap to break. But I guess he's going to just waste uh, tokens from Cripsis. I think I still think he should be rushing it now. Well, no, he hasn't. Uh, like I said, he's he's very he's very uh, methodical, very slow pace. But I think, yeah, he's, but I think he makes about... very solid calls. You know, I don't. Maybe maybe he shouldn't be running it. Whoa. Okay, so he's going to play both of these. Okay. Then he's probably going to go for the three pointer. Yep. Now he's going for it for sure. He can play it and advance it once, and then that's enough to uh, win next turn. Yep. There we go. However, if the runner runs HQ, he has a problem. And come on, advance it once. That's what you want to do. Okay, so he's going for the final play. Now it's going to be interesting what the runner does. Well, let's see what he I've draws. Seen, uh, I've seen uh, uh, Frizzle play very bold plays. One time he played, he drew an agenda when he had like a lot of them. And he played it as soon as he drew it. And then advanced it twice. And that was so fast and so uh, bold that the runner completely thought it was a trap. <laughs> Okay, so he's going to go for a maker's eye for a R&D run instead. Now is the luck with him? He probably won't raise this. It's a uh, yeah, it's a uh, it's going to be luck or not luck. Uh, if he doesn't raise it, we have to do the calculations. Cost eight. Okay, so it's obviously he's going to go for that Heimdall. If he takes a uh, Cripsis click, huh? oh, okay, he's running the archives to check. Okay, he won. That's it. Oh. Player one. And that was the end of the game. There's no nothing he can do now. And uh, he didn't, I guess, maybe he 
I don't know if he forgot that he can actually score a three-point agenda with uh, mandatory upgrades, or if he was just hoping to hit the final agenda with the uh, imp- Let's see. This is the last chance he has. If he hit an agenda now... Yeah, he knows it too. An agenda. Nah. And this should be easy decision from Fritz. Uh, you calling him Fritz. It's just Frizzler, though. Bang. Give him a net damage. Oh, no, it wasn't that one. <laughs> not that, he's not Zinteki. <laughs> well, yeah, there we go. Very uh, good game. Uh, decisions, very good decisions from both players. And uh, the slow and methodical uh, of uh, Fritz uh, did actually get him to the end, even though he drew quite a lot of agendas considered. Um, well, he did very, draw some for so uh, long. I'm very happy uh, Fritzler actually went uh, to the finals. To, uh, he moved on because, of course, he has a wizard. And uh, both me and Tragic are rooting for the wizard, of course. Oh, well, I think it's the only wizard in the competition completely, isn't it? And he, he has the, the reputation of being terrible. And everything else is Gabriel, most likely. Is, uh, are we, is there any Chaos decks in here? No, it's Chaos came out and exit, so it's not legal yet. It's not legal, right? Only we've seen one Kate in the in the uh, elimination rounds. Okay, well, thanks for joining me, Tragic. And uh, yes, I was petering I out so much towards. So for this. Yes, yeah, so I was petering out so long towards the end. I, I my my coffee, my the two coffees I had before we ran, <laughs> I ran out of steam a little. But uh, no, it was really really fun. Okay, so until next time. <laughs>